Greetings everyone. My name is Vinay. On today's agenda, we'll be looking at user rule and permissions. Uh, then we'll look at how to configure and manage thread sources. Followed by that demo on how to configure outbound email and how to configure inbound email. Now we work with some assumptions. We believe you possess a fundamental grasp of IT security and you are familiar with the basic concepts of SIM and SOAR. Now let's look at the demo for user rules and permissions. I will quickly switch. So I hope the screen is will just increase the font size for you all. So this is our welcome page, as we all know. And uh, let's look at the user roles. So these are the set of users that we have seen before in, in the previous sessions. So we'll look at roles now. So. Uh, we looked at this uh, quite in detail uh, about global roles and workspace. So these are the two main categories of roles that we have. One is the global role and one is the workspace role. So the basic distinction between these two types of roles is global roles is uh, primarily available across the organizations on the SOAR platform, where uh, workspace role is specifically uh, assigned to a particular workspace. So roles assigned in a workspace, all the permissions that you define are restricted to the workspace that you have defined. So uh, if you remember, we looked at uh, administrator, uh, we, we created a role, uh, there is incident creator, master administrator. Uh, and uh, uh, as we know, if you wish to create any role similar to the ones that you already have uh, with more permissions or lesser permissions, we encourage you to use the create role option and create the role that you like and define the set of permissions. Similarly, for workspace roles, if you wish to create a role, you can create as per your need and define the set of permissions. Uh, workspaces, if you remember, we looked at it. So uh, this is the workspace that we had defined. So it's written team was defined for handling for offense, malware, and phishing, while IT, IT operations workspace was defined to handle issues and incidents related to IT help desk, laptop issues, and theft management. Now permissions are all defined based on uh, uh, how how you define uh, the, your workspace and your roles? That's what defines the level of access and permission for a user uh, in in your SOAR platform. So there is one more way where we can define certain set of permissions. So I'll navigate to users. Under this, you can see there is API keys. So primarily, API keys. Uh, the, this is used for uh, apps like uh, uh, when whenever you install an application. Uh, they come with certain set of API keys, uh, which allow you to interact with the SOAR platform. Now, what happens when you have uh, a scenario where there is a SOAR platform and there is an integration server? Okay, uh, if you remember in one of the sessions, we briefly discussed about uh, what is the purpose of integration server. So that's available for uh, hosting the apps. So when you uh, install and deploy an app on an integration server, and when it needs to in uh, interact with the SOAR platform, you need API keys and a, a secret key. Okay, why we need that so that we can define the level of access uh, uh, for a particular user. So how would that be useful? So you can see here uh, there's one uh, API key that I had created with the name app host. I'll just uh, click on it and we'll see uh, all the details. So on the left side you can see summary of this API key. So there's an app host uh, API key for Curator app. There's a key ID when uh, there is no information about the last renewal. We have information about creator and the date when or is it modified. And on the right side, you can see there are permissions that are defined. So uh, some level of permissions have been defined for this key. So it has incident permissions. It can just read permissions. I can create simulations under this uh, set of key. I can add and manage apps and view API keys. And under administration, I can manage also manage the API keys. The rest of the options are not checked but let's say uh, you decide that you need to have additional information for this particular uh, key so i'll just click on edit and it turns out that i would probably need access to playbooks but i don't need, need them to delete edit or create i just want them to read so i'll just click on uh, read uh, and then i come out here and i see that uh, 
okay none, none of those uh, options seem to make sense for this particular api key which i've created so just select that one and click on save so this api key you can see the message it's got updated okay now if you wish to uh, create a new key uh, you select the create api key option uh, provide a display name uh, making sense on what you what is this key for give a short description for it and on the right side you can see you can define permission so let's say this is the key that you need uh, which requires all the permissions okay uh, I, I just scroll down slowly here and uh, you can see every checkbox is checked here right so i'll say api for all apps or rather i'll say global key okay so this is for all apps okay i'll go ahead scroll down and i'll click on create okay so you can see api key has been created this is your api key and api key secret you can select copy to clipboard and this information can be saved in uh, in your notepad or any other format uh, once you click on ok you can see the global key is created i'll just quickly click, click on this i can see all the information regarding this key now at any point of time it happens that you uh, did not save or you happen to lose your uh, secret key the password okay so you have an option to regenerate so you can click on regenerate and select this option to regenerate the key and if you no longer uh, are making use of these keys you can just go ahead and click on delete api, API key and that will delete this key from the system all right so that was about permissions uh, and roles via api keys now let's look at thread sources so thread sources these are the feeds that come in into curada source platform uh, and they are available for searches when artifacts are added to an incident uh, you can enable and disable these thread sources uh, as as we need. So I, I'll just scroll down. I can show you these are the ones that we have. Uh, so the number of uh, uh, thread sources that you can see are the ones that are available out of the box. So Soar platform gives by default these many set of thread sources. So let's say I wish to enable Adian Vault IP reputation feed. So I'll just go ahead and click on. Uh, enabling it and it gives me a quick uh, terms and conditions saying that yeah I agree to all of this uh, and once I click on agree there's a toggle button so you can see now this alien vault IP repetition feed is on now whenever uh, in artifacts are added to an incident or you create uh, uh, artifacts and it contains uh, suspicious IP addresses okay so this it will go ahead and perform a search against the alien vault ip reputation feed which contains a list of uh, suspicious ip addresses and uh, help you with that information about if a particular ip address is suspicious or not so that way you can enable uh, any of them uh, our very own uh, ibm x force exchange is also available so if i wish to enable this so uh, as you can see uh, when you have wish to enable this thread source i need to give api key and password some of you must be already aware. So you log in into Xforce Exchange Hub and in the settings, you have an option to create API key and password. So you generate a new API key and password uh, key in uh, that information here. And once you click on enable uh, like this, the IBM Xforce Exchange thread for, uh, source will be enabled for you. Okay. Now let's say you have uh, other thread source which are not part of this and you would like to integrate those thread sources in your environment. So how would you do that? Uh, we can achieve that by running a command. So I'll quickly switch to, I hope uh, the screen is visible for you all. So this is the command that I use. Uh, it is sudo resutil thread service edit hyphen name is the option uh, with the name of the uh, uh, thread source that I've created. There's a rest URL, this is very important. You need to make sure you give the correct URL uh, to which a SOAR platform will be connecting to to look out for uh, the SOAR uh, threat feeds. Uh, this particular uh, a TI custom uh, and the rest URL that I'm connecting to uh, requires a username and password. So accordingly, I provided hyphen user uh, value and the password. So if I once I hit enter, 
uh, it'll, after a few seconds, uh, this thread source will be enabled. Now, since I've already done this for demo's sake, I'll switch back to uh, the settings here, and you can see PI custom was created and it's an on state. So it, again, at any point of time, if you feel these thread sources are not no longer required or you're switching to any other thread source, uh, there's an easy toggle button. You just click and click on and off and PI custom is no more needed. And again, if you wish to turn it on again, it's a simple toggle button. On and off would help you keep your thread sources active on the source platform. So that's about it uh, regarding uh, user rules and thread sources. 